I work as an Uber Eats driver at night to make a little extra cash. Friday and Saturday nights are always the busiest because everyone's either at home or with friends and ordering food. So those were usually the nights I would work. I got a request on Saturday night at 1am to pick up McDonald's for a guy named Kyle. He lived a few minutes away from the current position so... I punched in the nearest McDonald's which was like a 2 minute drive away. I picked up his order. It was a small order. I only think he wanted 2 hamburgers. He lived like 5-7 to seven minutes away from the McDonald's. I followed the app's direction to the house and eventually it led me to a short dead end street that veered off another dead end street. The house was the last one on this dead end road. It's at right next to lines of trees that ran alongside a highway though it was pretty much dead at this hour. Given how late of an hour it was, I didn't want to ring the bell so I called this Kyle's guy's number. It rang once then went to his voicemail so I hung up. Then I got a text from him through my phone. He told me to come to the door and so I did. I got to the big wooden front porch of the house and so the front door opened. A bald guy opened the door and he didn't look very old. He looked to be in his 30s yet his head was completely bald. Maybe he was sick or he just liked the look so I don't judge. However his breath was disgusting and he seemed to be quite drunk so that was a little off putting. The payments were done through the app so usually there was no need to wait around for money but this time this Kyle guy asked me to come put the pizza on the kitchen table while he ran to fetch a tip. I didn't object to free money so I waited in his kitchen which by the way was only lit by a small sized nightlight so it was pretty dim in there. The whole kitchen smelled rather disgusting though. I didn't know what it was. Kyle was taking awfully long down the basement fetching the tip so I started to wonder a bit. I stepped onto the living room which was adjacent to the kitchen. The TV was on in there which was the only reason I could see anything. However the stench was even greater in this room. Then I noticed that the back door slid half open. Maybe he was airing out whatever that putrid odour was. For the hell of it, I walked to the back door expecting to get a quick breath of fresh air but the smell only got worse. Then I finally stepped outside onto the man's back deck. I heard flies, not just one, a lot of them, right by the door. Then I guess a motion sensor light saw my movement and turned on, revealing two big black garbage bags stuffed with two long objects. The smell was unbearable. It took me a second to catch on to what I most likely was looking at. Waiting around for the tip didn't seem like a good idea anymore. I went back into the kitchen and rushed to the front door and just then I heard Kyle emerging from the basement calling to me, waving a few singles in his hand. He saw me as I was about to open the door and he asked me where I was going. I had to come up with something so I said, I was just rushing to check if I had something in my car. He said okay as he came over to me and handed me the bills. Then he turned back to the back door to the porch where the light was still on. Then he looked back at me with his gummy smile now disappearing. He asked me in his firm voice if I went to his backyard. I told him no and just stared at me not seeing anything. At this point I didn't care anymore. I opened the door and walked myself out but not without him grabbing my shoulder. As I got onto the stoop I yanked his hand off my shoulder and ran to my car. I saw him run back inside with the front door still open. I turned my car on when I sat and watched his front door, curious to see if he'd come out and he did. He came back out running full speed for my car with a big metal rod in his hand. I drove away from his house ready to call the police and report him. I called when I got down the block making sure to leave him no time to dispose of those potentially dead bodies. I wandered down the block and saw a police car pulls up literally within two minutes. I watched the whole thing as I told the police where to go. In fact Kyle, if that's his real name, had already started moving the bags which did contain dead bodies to the bushes in his backyard. Everything about this guy was off for leaving the back door open to reveal dead bodies to a pizza delivery boy may have been deranged but he also wasn't the smartest man around. I deliver food for an Asian eater in my town. It's the best gig I could get at my age. Simply for the tips alone, my friend and I work together. We were actually the only two who aren't Asian. My friend usually works at the counter and takes phone calls. I usually do deliveries and that's the way I like it. My friend got off the phone during one night shift. We had together and told me I'd be doing a delivery after the food was prepared. I was handed a brown paper bag and I was off on my way. The address that I was given led me to some small dirt driveway off the main road onto an enclosed property. Don't picture it as some luxurious private property though. It was some old unkempt excuse of a property and the house seemed to be closed off given that there wasn't a single light on there and how high the grass was. I called my friend back at the restaurant and gave the phone to her boss. Unfortunately our boss is a stench so he yelled at me in his thick Asian accent to knock on the door and don't waste the food. I got out from my car and felt grass rubbing against my shins. That's how tall it was. I went up the three stairs to the front door and knocked really loud since I didn't seem 
seemed to be a doorknob. As I expected after 30 seconds of waiting, there was no answer. So I got back in my car and the first thing I did was start texting my friend back at the restaurant. But when I looked back up to the house this time, one of the upstairs lights inside of the house was turned on. So I went back to the door and knocked once again. Only on the first knock, the door pushed open slightly. Someone had opened the door, but there was nobody standing next to the door. I pushed the door open a little more and called out, Hello. My voice echoed through the empty house. I was waiting to hear footsteps come to the door. They never did. Obviously, someone had to open the door. So if they weren't going to come to the door, I had to assume they wanted me to come in. I stepped into the house. As my shoe made the wood floor creak, I called out one more time. And this time, someone replied back. I heard the words, Aqui Arriba. Now, I'm not fluent in Spanish by any means. But I knew that a key meant here. And I knew Arriba meant above. So I put the two and two together. And figured they said up here. There was a stairway in the middle of the hallway so I walked over to it. I looked up the stairs and all I saw at the top was an arm reached over the ledge doing a little stiff come here motion. I used what little Spanish skills I gained from middle school and said something like tengo tu comida. As I woke up the stairs I got about halfway up but the arm wasn't there anymore. I got to the top looking for whoever was just standing by the ledge over the stairs and I noticed through the tiniest amount of light that the person was now inside a bedroom with the lights off but I didn't see the actual person. Once again all I saw was a person person's arm doing the same come here motion. It was such an eerie sight. I knew for certain I wasn't going in that room though. So I said firmly with confidence, buddy I'm not going in there. You can come out here with money or I'll leave. Suddenly the arm pulled away into the darkness of the room ahead of me and after a few seconds of standing there in silence I was hit by a flying object. It happened so fast that it took me a few moments to realize I'd just been hit with a stiff severed arm. It wasn't some plastic Halloween toy, it was a real arm. I ran down the stairs with the food still in my hand and got back into the car. I didn't even call my friend or my boss. I drove straight to the nearest neighboring house and rang that person's doorbell. When they answered, I told them about the neighbor, what he had just done to me. And the woman, who had the most puzzled look on her face, said, nobody lived there or nobody had lived there for years. I felt my stomach drop and those words hit me. She said she would call the police. After we talked about it for a good five minutes, I went on my way back to the restaurant with the food. I explained the best I could to my boss and he let it go. I sometimes wonder how things would have played off if I went into that room and who or what would I have found. I used to work at Domino's. They closed at 3am on weekends and being that I was taking a year off during college at the time, my boss took advantage of that and always threw me on the 9 to 3am shifts. There would always be at least three people working that late. One to cook the pizzas, one to take orders and one to do any needed deliveries. This night the one cooking the pizzas was Jeff, a 28 year old Italian who worked two jobs. He was always in a bad mood so when he told me to deliver something, I did it without complaints. So being a Saturday night, it wasn't uncommon to get calls for deliveries past 2am. Around 2.30 I was told to deliver two pizzas to an address that I still vaguely remember. 27 Crocker Drive or something close to that. I took my stupid beat up 2002 Honda Civic up the road for 5 minutes. The only main road that cuts through our tiniest town. I live in Manchester Township area and Jersey containing a whole lot of nothing but trees everywhere. My drive there was a dark one after merging off the main road onto a small road with no street lights. The only light that could be seen for miles were my headlights. I turned off the public road onto a dirt road with the private property sign posted outside it. It seemed I had arrived to the house I was delivering to and suddenly I heard a bang reverberating through my car followed by a weakened sense of handling of my car as well. As a repeating flopping sound, I knew for certain I just got a flat tire. I stopped the car at once and got out to confirm the front tire was completely flat. I could see through the headlights that the house was walking distance from my car though so instead of calling my insurance company it would make more sense to deliver the pizza and also ask the person for help. I got to the deck of the house. It was an average size house completely enclosed by trees as were most of the houses around there. The lights were on inside but all the blinds were shut. I rang the bell and a quickly normal looking young man answered the door before exchanging the pizzas for money. I told the man about the predicament I just found myself in. A look of concern came over his face as he handed me the money and I handed in the pizza. He came outside to take a look at my car with me. It was a 30 second walk from the house. He got to my car and he started analysing the tyre. He said he could help me. He just needed his tools from inside. I started to question what I could have hit on his dirt driveway and he yelled out to me, don't worry about it. As I was walking down his road, I walked a bit further, kind of ignoring him, when I noticed a spike strip in the road. A very small one but undoubtedly what I hit. I could 
couldn't see any other reason for that to be there other than him putting it there deliberately. I started thinking over the possibilities of what could be going down so I pretended I didn't see anything and I walked back saying I didn't find anything. He looked at me, I was worried, he might have been suspicious but then he turned around and said he was going inside to get some tools. God only knows what he meant by that. I waited for him to get into his front door. I got in my car turned the car on and threw it into reverse. I was not sticking around to find out what he was doing. I heard the flat tire wobble on the dirt road as my car slowly rolled in reverse. I made a point of avoiding the spike strips this time. My car pulled out on the private dirt road onto the concrete road. I took one last look down the man's driveway to make sure he wasn't following me. Then I took off. I couldn't drive too fast though and risk of damaging my wheel. I stayed a steady 10 to 15 miles per hour. I looked in the rear view mirror and saw something behind my car. The man running after my car. I had no choice but to step on it, forcing me to cringe as I could literally feel the damage being done to my wheel. The distance between my car and the man got greater until he was out of sight. After turning back onto the one main road that I mentioned earlier, I slowed down the speed a little bit, back to 10 to 15. It was a long ride back, about 20 minutes, since I had to drive slow. When I got back, the police would be closing in 10 minutes, but I had to return the domino sign that the makers put on our cars when we were doing deliveries. Jeff was upset with me that I took so long until I told him the whole story. The woman who was also working the same shift as us listened in with a look of shock on her face. The whole time, when time came to close, Jeff told me I should drive home slow since I live like down the block and I should take care of it tomorrow. The two went off to their cars and drove away. I sat in my car for a little bit, thinking. Eventually I turned my car on and started slow and started my slow drive back to my house. I noticed, however, that a car without its lights was on following close behind me for a while, so I pulled up in front of some small houses to see if they would do the same. The car passed me, but then pulled over on the same side of the street, a little further down. I started to panic knowing it had to be the man who figured that he find me at the Domino's that he ordered from. I couldn't lead him to my house, so even though I didn't know for certain if it was him, I had to be overly paranoid and call the cops. I had the police come to my exact location for fear of being followed. After 5 to 10 minutes of waiting, a cop car slowly rolled down the street and I beeped my horn to stop him. He stopped in reverse so that the windows were lined up with mine and then we both rolled them down. I pointed at the car in front of me with its lights off, sitting a little further in front of me. But just then, that car zoomed out of its pocket and its lights fell off instantly disappearing down the road into the night. The cop put his lights on and sped after him without saying a word. I didn't know if he wanted me to follow him, but I couldn't with my tyre, so I drove home as quickly as I could and parked my car in the driveway. I still don't know if that cop caught that driver somehow. I doubt it, but I like to imagine he did. Either way, I would make sure to watch my back every time I drove home at night, and I quit my job two months later. Thank you for watching today's video. If you're a fan of these stories, then I would highly suggest you subscribe and help me reach to the 150 subscriber goal mark. And also help me out by liking the video. But yeah, goodbye.